How to Determine Antique Book Values, Ultimate Guide Regardless of whether you are a book collector with a sizable library or you have just come across some old books lying in your attic, it can be a challenge to determine the cost or value of old books. Many people do not know that old books can sell for a fortune. By old, we do not mean your primary school science book. These rare books should be famous during their time and scarce during this time for them to have a high book value. So, what determines the old book values? To be honest, it is a blend of several factors that play a crucial role in defining how much an antique book can be sold for. If you have an old collection of books that might have you wondering, how much is my book worth today? Then stick around because you will find the answers to all your questions in this ultimate antique book value guide. In order to figure out how to calculate the value of your rare books, it is essential you first know the factors that can impact old book values. So, let's have a look. Factors that drive the value of antique books. The value of antique books has significantly declined over the last few years. Hence, there is a high probability that your collection of antique books has little to no worth to collectors. Finding a few particular books could have been a challenge a few years ago. But thanks to the rising trend of buying books online, both globally and domestically, the demand for books has faced a severe decline. The value of antique books is primarily based on the following factors. Demand. Scarcity. Age. Condition. Completeness. The most valuable books typically have all of these components. An antique book's worth may drop if one of its components is lost. Let's go through these points in further detail. Demand. The first thing you need to think about when assessing the worth of an old book is its current demand in the market. Even if the book you possess is rare and is in excellent condition, it might not sell for a fortune if it is not in demand. D.D. Charles Darwin and become familiar with, On the Origin of Species. A few bucks will get you the book in hardcover, and some websites even offer the ebook for free. People will wish to comprehend the science of evolution. Hence the book will likely be in great demand in the coming years. In superb condition, the first edition from 1859 is more uncommon than copies made in the 1880s or in current paperback editions. Even the printouts from 1880 can sell for around six figures despite being more uncommon. The demand for a book may arise from its relevance. Scarcity. Similar to what was stated in the preceding paragraph, the scarcity of books is not entirely responsible for their value. Some books are rare because they were only printed in small quantities. But the scant publishing could be due to its lack of significance. If there is no market demand for the book, its rarity has no added value. Age First off, the age of the book is not necessarily a factor in assessing a book's worth. It can take things as long as a century to be considered antique. But the situation is very different when we talk about an old book. It is too early to label something rare after 100 years. Typically, a book must have been released prior to 1830 in order to be considered old. Printing methods changed around 1830, and more books were published on a wider scale. And for that reason, it is more likely that books published after 1830 will be more common than the ones printed earlier. Condition Collectors are particularly concerned with a book's condition. It is, therefore, one of the important things you should consider. Around 1910, the majority of hardcover books had dust jackets. Just coats were generally overlooked since they were delicate. There are several works, largely modern fiction, that were widely published after 1900. But, books in good or almost fine condition are quite uncommon. F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby is one of the best examples. Over 25 million copies of the book have been sold since it was first published in 1925. Because of this, it is a very common novel. It's common to find used copies from 1925 that sell for $300,000. Due to the high demand, the first editions with a dust jacket have a sizable value. Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald is worth over $6,000 in first edition condition with a dust jacket and only $300 without a dust jacket. 
It should be emphasized that the large difference in value is due to the fact that approximately 90% of dust jackets are typically destroyed, either intentionally or as a result of their transitory and delicate structure. If you possess the dust jacket of a great book, be sure to treasure it and protect it by wrapping it in plastic. This is due to the fact that a rip in the dust cover can significantly lower the value of the book. Books in bad condition or without good dust jackets may have a large 90% value drop. But you shouldn't only concentrate on the state. Two other criteria are needed, demand and rarity. Therefore, demand, a book's physical condition, and rarity can all dramatically raise a book's worth. Completeness. The last element is completeness which is quite essential for books. The worth of the book depends on every page, even those that are just blank pages. Ensure that there aren't any loose pages or leaf piles that have escaped or are on the verge of escaping. Even a single misplaced page might severely damage the value of a rare book. Other factors that play a role in valuation antique books. A book's rarity may also be affected by other elements. The book will become more uncommon, for instance, if the writer, a public figure, and a famous individual signs it. In addition, it gains value over an unsigned copy of the book. This was especially true for old books that were released before 1900. At that time, authors did not usually sign their work. Furthermore, if the book has a fascinating pedigree or is owned by a renowned or notable person, it will be pricier than the identical copy you already possess. Publications like Dove's Press or Kelmscott Press issued limited editions of important and well-regarded works in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. All of the published editions become incredibly valuable collectibles. Last but not least, books with fine leather coverings and hand-colored pictures and plates are likely to become rarer than standard copies. All of these things can make books more valuable. Do first editions of books sell for more money? The initial printing of a book usually has more significance to book collectors than to the printers. There's a rationale behind that. Only a small portion of the total quantity of book copies that the publisher hopes to sell is included in the first printing. The initial printing is envisioned by collectors as a long-term investment. Books published after 1900 could come in various printings, editions, and states. A book's worth typically rises as it approaches its first edition, especially if it is the initial edition, initial printing. But how to tell if a book is its first edition? Let's find out. How to find out if a book is first edition? Devoted book collectors and seasoned booksellers invest significant time, expertise, and resources in comprehending what a publisher may utilize to denote the original printing. Every publisher has a special method for recognizing the initial printing of a book. They occasionally alter their technique of designating first editions, which further complicates matters. Using reference books is typically advantageous when demonstrating a specific book's first printing. However, there are several important considerations. Let's go over these key indicators so you can determine how to identify if a book represents the first edition. A number line. Usually, the copyright page is where you should start looking if you want to determine whether a book is the first edition. Publishers frequently employ a limited number of techniques to identify the copy's place in the book's printing history. The publishing and occasionally the year of distribution may be displayed on a number line. Consider it a game of elimination. In most cases, the first number on the number line indicates what edition that book version was a part of. Every time a book is printed, the publishers delete a digit from the number lines. The printing number of the book is often indicated by the lowest number on the line. The letter row is one of several variations on that concept. The letters A and B stand for the first and second printings, respectively. Keep in mind that the printing number is on one side of the number line, and the year the book was published is on the other. As the book keeps selling, the publishers take the dates and numbers out. Marked as first edition. The words first edition are occasionally printed on a book page. Many booksellers typically refer to it as the first edition stated. Publishers may sometimes designate the first edition as first copy, first publication, or first printed. They don't always imply that the book is indeed the original edition, though. 
Printing History Page The printing history may occasionally include all the necessary information, but other passages in the book may be in conflict with it. Reprint companies like Triangle Books occasionally purchase original printing plates from the original publisher. As a result, the copyright page's edition identifiers for the reprinted version would essentially be the same. Now, it comes down to you to contrast the copyright page with the spine of the book. The name of the reprinting firm is typically located at the bottom of the spine. For instance, if a book's copyright page claims it is the initial edition by Sundial Press, but its spine lists Triangle Books as the publisher, it is presumably not the first printing. This is yet another reliable technique for determining whether a book is an initial edition. So, now that you have been made aware of the factors that can influence the value of antique books, the following are some examples of rare books along with their prices to give you the know-how of how these factors come into play. Famous Antique Books Price Guide This book is an edition of the famous novel by the Russian novel Lyof N. Tolstoy, first published in 1878. While this is not the first edition of the infamous novel, it has a high value because of its good shape and illustrations, which is quite rare. Plus, the book's binding is intact too. Remember the factors we discussed above. Even though this book is original, it still does not cost more than $500 simply because of its deteriorated condition. While this book is definitely not in its best shape, it is among the first manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible, which means not only is it super rare, but it also holds immense significance for people following a certain religion. Thus, the whopping value of 49 grand. This set of British encyclopedia is worth more than 800 US dollars because most of them come with original dust covers. The presence of a dust cover significantly raises the value of an old book. Considering that this trio of books belongs to the 16th century and is still in pretty good shape, they are valued at $25,000 on Etsy. One of the most significant expressions of Chinese cultural life and ideas, Chinese painting is closely tied to Chinese calligraphy and poetry. The origins of pictorial painting date back to the time of the cavemen. This hand-painted book consists of around 50 Chinese paintings that are super distinct. Considering these drawings are in good condition, too, the book is listed for such a high price on Etsy. So, you see, there is no standard value or estimation of how much your antique book is worth. Therefore, here is how you can identify the value of your old books. How to determine old book values. Check out past auction histories or the current market. The current market is the best place to start your search for a rare book's market worth. Are there any further duplicates of the book available for purchase online? Has the book appeared recently in any antique book auctions? The last few purchases and auction prices are typically the strongest indicators of current market prices. Depending on the rarity of the book you're trying to value, you might need to do a little exploring to discover an identical copy. You should also be aware that the final price out of an auction that occurred even a few years ago could not match the current market worth of the book. You may be required to register for a subscription that could cost a little money up front to look up some auction records. Understand that the market for antique books fluctuates like all other markets. Regarding closing prices from auctions, it's crucial to remember that the market for antique books varies, just like other markets, when looking for samples of recent sales. While the market worth of some products will fluctuate somewhat over time, the value of other items can change considerably in a short period of time, even a few years. For instance, occasionally, a particular author or creator will become hot on the marketplace for one particular cause, and prices for that person's work may increase over a year or two. However, such costs could not accurately represent what is currently worth. Of course, the inverse is also possible. Your book may be written by a writer whose books are currently fetching very high values at auction. Bids that occurred from a while ago might not reflect that, the prices at that time may have been far lower. Consulting an appraiser If previous auction news or current online marketplaces don't provide enough details about your book, you might want to think about contacting an appraiser. An expert in rare books should have in-depth market knowledge and expertise in estimating the value of books identical to yours. 
some specialists in rare book valuation may be able to offer an estimate for items with a wide variety of production dates and locations. Other appraisers might concentrate significantly more on a specific category of rare books. Get in touch with a nearby antique bookseller. Where can you locate the best appraiser to give you an estimate of the value of your book? A nearby dealer in rare books might be able to assist when you are looking for the best appraiser to give you an estimate of the value of your book. A rare bookstore in your neighborhood might be able to provide the appraisal for you in some circumstances if you're not looking to resell the book but instead want to get one for insurance purposes. Plus, there are moral considerations to take into account. A rare bookshop shouldn't provide an evaluation or valuation if you're simultaneously asking them to purchase the book from you in order to resell it. Remember that asking the retailer to purchase the book from you is not the same as asking for an appraisal. Bring the book to a nearby bookseller who might be interested if you only want to sell it and ask them how much they'll pay for it. Depending on what they think they can get for the book on the secondary market, they should propose a reasonable price. Problems with the book's physical condition Even though we have covered this point above, let's go over this once again. The condition of a book is crucial. Even if you discover a copy of the book you own being sold on an online auction site or in auction archives, you should find out if the books were in the same condition. Your book will be worth more on the market if it is in excellent shape. Likewise, your book will be worth less on the market if it is in bad shape compared to the version that you recently discovered. Sale Valuation versus. Last but not least, the current market worth of a book may vary depending on whether you're looking for evaluation or appraisal for insurance reasons versus estimation of what the book would probably sell for today if it were put up for auction. Insurance values may be higher than the item's current estimated market worth because they take into account the expense of replacing the book. In a nutshell, the simplicity with which you'll be able to determine a rare book's market value depends partly on how uncommon the publication is and if any copies have been recently sold. However, even if you are unable to find comparable editions that have recently sold through online market stalls or at auction, a qualified rare book appraiser may be able to give you the details you need. Of course, occasionally, a rare book would go up for auction that no one in the present was even aware existed until extensive research was done. Take your time, take into account a variety of sources, and be clear on what you want the book's worth to accomplish. Additional Resources Conclusion When determining the rare book values, whether you're buying or selling one, it's always worthwhile to consult an expert. But we realize finding a reliable source to help you identify the value of your old books can be challenging, especially if this is a new experience for you. Hence, we created this ultimate guide for you with the hopes that it will help you learn all that you need to know before you can find an estimated value for your antique book collection. So, did it help? Let us know in the comments section below if you found our article helpful and worth your time.